This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Roads were flooded after a big storm moved through Rexburg quickly during our 5.30 newscast earlier tonight. That's what it looked like. Now students, faculty, staff, homeowners, renters dealing with the aftermath. That's Spencer Webb. One of our viewers sent that video to us tonight. Let's get right to Eyewitness News reporter Tyler Berg. He's live for us out of Rexburg tonight. And Tyler, what is it like where you are now? Well, driving into Rexburg, you wouldn't really tell. You can't see a whole lot of water until you get closer to campus. And then you notice the buzz. You see all the cars driving around. You see all the students walking around with no shoes, no socks. They're all carrying buckets and waste pails and, and anything that can hold water. And they're all helping out their, their fellow students get water out of the lower tiered floors of apartments. And right now, joining us is Ammon Lewis. Ammon, you lived in this home. You had some flooding. Yes, just a little bit. And, and explain, I guess, walk me through what was happening here. Yeah, so um, I was just living here, and I was at work most of the time. When I came home, it was just completely flooded. Uh, probably, you know, a good foot up on the house, almost coming in. And you had a lot of people coming here to help you. Uh, did you know a lot of these people? I just moved here on Saturday, so I didn't know a single person. My roommate, Austin, and uh, a couple other people. But there was probably a good 50 people here, maybe even more. And did you have any flooding inside your home? And in the cellar a little bit, but it got a pump in there, so it's fine. And how, you, you mentioned it got pretty close to coming in your front door. How close was that? Like within inches. And, and you, you had, how many people would you say were here helping? You? Yeah, like around 50 or 60. 50 or 60. Yeah. And, and how, how long were they here helping until you got most of the water taken care of? Well, it's probably, you know, two hours, would you say? Two hours. Okay, and guys, this is happening throughout town. Every apartment complex you go to, almost, you can see students shoveling water out of those lower-tiered apartments. But for now, we're going to send it back to you guys in the studio. Todd? All right, Tyler, if you uh, run across anything else there, we'll check back with you. Appreciate the update. Now, we want to show you some other video and pictures that came into us from some of our loyal viewers. Check this out. This is the BYU-Idaho campus. Of course, it is closed with finals just around the corner for many. Uh, several buildings were flooded with water that you're looking at here. Some of the lower locations of the Man Wearing Center. Uh, this video sent to us from Christine Dye. This is the bottom floor of the Man Wearing Center right now. This is outside. You see the courtesy there from the music department. We've gotten reports that some buildings are so bad that water was running down the stairs at one point. A lot of people taking video. Uh, campus administrators are encouraging students who are flooded out of their own apartments to go to the BYU Idaho Center for shelter. Look at some of these other photos. This one here on our website. I'll, we'll show you this video first of all because Tyler was talking about all these people that students and anybody that could grab anything that would hold water, scrambling to to uh, help uh, lend a helping hand. Buckets, Rubbermaid containers, anything. They are literally trying to uh, bail people out of the mud and the water, diverting water any which way they can. Now, take a, take a look at this. This is Bright Eye. Uh, Bright Eye. This is our, our, our system that we can show you uh, pictures right off of our, uh, our website and Facebook page. You can go to our Facebook page to see many of these photos and video. But uh, look at the parking lot there near that church building. The roads, I believe that was near Mariah and I can't remember the other street, the intersection. Parking lots of apartment complexes. Go back up to that top one. This shows the students inside their apartment. It's hard to see, but they are standing waist deep in water up to their table there, that white table in the front, and then things are floating inside their apartment. Incredible video coming out of um, Rexburg. Now take a look at this. Cars trying to navigate through the intersections. Watch this one car go th across here. You see the floating debris. You do not want to do this. You just don't know how deep those pools can be in the low-lying areas of intersections or if there's a manhole cover that has come off and you're going to drop through a hole. You just don't know. Watch some of these cars. This blue one here in the front will second guess. Whoop, don't, nope, I don't think I want to do that. Back it up. When I lived in Arizona and they had the monsoon rains like this on a daily basis, they had the saying, turn around, don't drown. That's exactly what that car did, and that's the right thing to do. Do not go through low-lying pools like that. Now, we checked with the uh, Rexburg, uh, Rexburg Airport. Steve Cannon's watching this. I guess, Steve, 
They tell us 0.76 inches of rain. That's not even a complete inch. No, it's not, Todd, but it is at the airport, and the airport is on the west side of town. So that might not be specific or event specific to some of the other happenings that went around. And we should point out if there's a silver lining to this cloud, no pun intended, it was that the storm was a very fast moving storm, meaning it didn't sit over the area and linger for very long. Now, over my shoulder is a picture of what happens when storm drains uh, dump on vans that are parked right underneath them. You saw the video there taken from the Madison County Courthouse of just how deep that water was. And this is the size of the hailstones that fell. Compare the quarter to the hailstones in and around the area. However,